of communicating engineering to the public through first of all her broadcasting and now her writing. I'm very grateful to her for that. <laughs> she has the gift of making engineering and science really accessible to a very broad audience, which is not easy to do. And as this book demonstrates, she's also very adept at injecting some much needed evidence <laughs> into topics of debate that, if I can say, have been dominated by stereotypes and sentiments. <laughs> and uh, I can think of uh, a few other areas of public life where those skills might come in handy, actually, at the moment. <laughs> the second reason that we're really pleased to be supporting this launch is because, as the Academy's champion for diversity and inclusion, it's really a great personal pleasure to be able to support a book that tackles perceptions and preconceptions about women and their role in society in such a refreshing and rigorous way. It doesn't happen very often. The Academy leads the drive right across the engineering profession to improve our diversity. This is something that is urgently needed as only 9% of the UK's professional engineering workforce is made up of women and only 7% are from black and ethnic minorities. And these are unacceptable statistics in 2017. We're determined that we are going to change the image of engineering so that more people from all backgrounds see it for the fascinating, varied, and rewarding career that it really is, that we know it to be. Now, Angela's book provides a really important contribution towards helping us tackle the highly gendered perceptions of engineering that sadly still persist in the UK. Unless we can influence those who influence the decisions of young people, we're just not going to be able to bring about the step change in the diversity of the engineering profession that we so badly need. And Angela's book, I think, is a wonderful provocation to all of us to challenge our assumptions and our biases in a way that could only be helpful to that cause. We do, of course, recognise that the engineering community itself needs to play its full part in this. And we're working really hard with partners right across the engineering profession to see a more inclusive culture within engineering. And the work that we're doing with those partners and the response that we're getting tells me that the dial is moving. <coughs> Diversity and inclusion are getting more attention across the board, and it's great to see the message crossing over into popular culture, for example, through the Oscar-nominated Hidden Figures brilliant film. So we look forward to working with Angela and I'm sure many others in the room here today to ensure that future generations grow up in a world where there are no boy jobs and girl jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on that happy note, it's my pleasure to hand over to Louise Haynes, who's the Head of Nonfiction at Fourth Estate.